Is this the end of Roe v. Wade? As a secret Supreme Court document is leaked, thousands of demonstrators hit the streets. The U.S. role in Ukraine, how we provided intelligence leading to the seeking of Russia's key warship in the Black Sea. And fashionistas unite! We'll have highlights from the celebrity fashion event of the year. All that and more on this edition of Chapman News. From Dodge College of Film and Media Arts, this is Chapman News. Good afternoon and welcome to this week's edition of Chapman News. I'm Sophia Chacon. And I'm Julia Gillums. We begin this morning with breaking news on abortion rights in the U.S., a major event in this country's history. It started Monday night with a leaked document from the Supreme Court. By majority opinion, the justices have decided to do away with Roe v. Wade, which had granted women the right to abortion for half a century. The reaction was quick and explosive. We have team coverage from Barbara Fox, Peyton Bell, and Haley Montez. We begin our reporting with Barbara. This is what democracy looks like. Fear and outrage fill the streets of America after a draft version of the Supreme Court's majority ruling was leaked. The Supreme Court confirmed the draft was legitimate, but not final. The draft shows a majority of justices on the court would be prepared to uphold a Mississippi law banning most abortions after 15 weeks and overturn Roe v. Wade, leaving it up to individual states to determine if abortion is legal. Chief Justice John Roberts is calling the leak an egregious breach, and many Republicans, like Senator Mitch McConnell, agree. I hope that the leaker who is extremely likely to be found, given the limited number of people who uh, have the ability to access early drafts of opinions, will be dealt with as severely as the law may uh, allow. Many pro-life advocates, however, are calling this an historic moment. Particularly for the folks, you know, the, the grassroots pro-life organizers who have been fighting for life for decades now, really since Roe v. Wade. But what would the country look like without Roe v. Wade? Legislatures in 25 states would almost certainly move to ban or restrict access to abortions. Some women would have to travel out of the state for the procedure. Other women who are low income would unwillingly carry their baby to term and rely on a social safety net. Many forced to pay hospital bills they can't afford. Surrounded by pro-choice advocates, Governor Gavin Newsom delivered his remarks on the draft at a Planned Parenthood facility. I just want to share and add my voice to the voice of quite literally tens of millions, hundreds of millions uh, of Americans and express my outrage uh, about the decision the Supreme Court uh, appears to have made as it relates to rolling back uh, our constitutional rights. The rights have been well established and affirmed over and over again. The sunny state is already home to the most expansive abortion protections in the country. Just yesterday, Governor Newsom called California a beacon of hope. California lawmakers plan to go further by becoming one of the first to guarantee a right to an abortion in a state constitution. This would make it harder to repeal California abortion protections if the political climate changes. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Barbara. As we've been reporting, there have been demonstrations all week long at the Supreme Court in Washington, D.C., and at abortion clinics all over the United States. Some are supporting abortion rights, and some are supporting the possible end of Roe v. Wade. Joining us now is Peyton Bell, who's live out of Planned Parenthood in Orange. Peyton? including birth control, STD testing, vaccines, and abortion services. There were quite a few pro-life demonstrators here earlier, and I spoke to one of them who handed us some pamphlets and told us that she's excited about this new brief and says that she feels like her prayers are being answered. This clinic is frequently the site of demonstrations, both pro-life and pro-choice. There have been similar protests all across the country, in Los Angeles, Phoenix, Houston, Milwaukee, Boston, and D.C. Some demonstrations not only about Roe v. Wade, but about the Supreme Court itself and whether it has become too political. 
According to a recent survey by Pew Research, 84% of Americans think the justices should keep politics out of their deliberations. That number affects the general view of the court itself. A year ago, 64% of the public had a favorable view of the court, but this year, that number dropped to 54%, which is the lowest approval rating in 40 years. If the court does vote to overturn the landmark decision in June, there is potential to affect other rights as well. Making sure that people understand the risk that we all face, these fundamental rights that we have enjoyed, you know, the right to privacy, the right to marry, those are not rights that are specifically outlined in the Constitution. Those rights are at risk. Privacy rights such as gay marriage and birth control could be threatened too. Some Republicans deny this scenario, but one thing is for sure, these demonstrations will continue over the next several months. I'm Peyton Bell, live at the Planned Parenthood in Orange. Back to you. In less than six months, the country will have midterm elections. The conventional wisdom is that the party in power, the Democrats, will lose seats to the party out of power, the Republicans. However, the Roe v. Wade issue may throw this conventional wisdom up in the air. Haley Montez joins us with that story. Haley? The possible overturn of Roe v. Wade could have massive effects on the upcoming midterm elections. I take a closer look at just how much. Democratic Senator Elizabeth Warren could barely contain her anger. This is what the Republicans have been working toward this day for decades. They have been out there plotting, carefully cultivating these Supreme Court justices so they could have a majority on the bench who would accomplish something that the majority of Americans do not want. Stand up, fight back! Show me what the latest Washington Post ABC News poll supports her claims. 54% of Americans want to keep Roe v. Wade. We will not go back! We will not go back! While only 28% want to overturn it. and 18% have no opinion. Democrats will be relying on the turnout to keep this ruling. And President Biden thinks the overturning of Roe v. Wade is not just about abortion. What happens if you have a uh, state ch change the law saying that, that, that children who are LGBTQ can't be in classrooms with other children? Is that, is that legit under the way that the decision is written? What are the next things that are going to be attacked? because this MAGA crowd is really the most extreme political ex organization that's existed in American history. Republican senators in February blocked the Women's Health Protection Act, which would make the right to an abortion a federal law. Somebody, likely somebody inside the court itself, leaked a confidential internal draft to the press, almost certainly in an effort to stir up an inappropriate pressure campaign to sway an outcome. Many Republican-dominated states already have abortion laws set to replace Roe's ruling. As Democrats push pro-choice legislation in the midterms, Republicans will continue to push the pro-life agenda and support for the Supreme Court's decision, polarizing individual states and nation's legislation in the next couple months. For Chapman News, I'm Haley Montez. The 2022 primaries kicked off in Ohio and Indiana Tuesday. In Ohio, J.D. Vance, who was recently endorsed by former President Trump, won the GOP primary for Senate. And on the other side of the aisle, Representative Tim Ryan won the Democratic primary. With rising inflation and, and other economic concerns fueling the Republican push to take over the Senate, Roe v. Wade, maybe the spark Democrats need to take the midterms. And let's wrap up with some economic news. The job market is showing signs of returning to normal. More than 400,000 jobs were added in April, leaving the 3.6% unemployment rate unchanged. And what goes up often must come down. After a dramatic rise on Wednesday, the stock market faced its worst showing since March 2020. Dow Jones tumbled down more than 1,000 points on Thursday and another 400 points today. The Federal Reserve raised its benchmark interest rate by half a percentage point to combat the rising inflation, the biggest hike in two decades. I'm Haley Montez, back to you at the desk. 
As Russia relentlessly attacks Mariupol, the Azovostal steel plant is one of Ukraine's last stands. Ukrainians are defending the plant under near-constant Russian bombardment. Despite Moscow's claim of a ceasefire, Russia's grip on Mariupol continues to tighten. And an update on the attack on the theater in Mariupol, Ukraine. AP News held an investigation and found evidence which points to 600 people dead from the Russian airstrike. Based on the account of 23 survivors, AP News recreated the events of the day. The day. Their accounts are devastating. This new evidence makes this event stand out as the deadliest attack on civilians to date. U.S. intelligence helped Ukraine sink the Russian ship Moskava in late April. According to a senior defense official, the U.S. provided intelligence as to the location of the Moskava to the Ukrainians. But the official said that the U.S. had no role in Ukraine's decision to strike the ship. According to Pentagon spokesman John Kirby, the U.S. has provided Ukraine useful battlefield intelligence throughout the war. This is to help Ukraine defend itself. Coming up on Chapman News, a grim record set for COVID deaths here in the U.S. A reminder, it's not over. And should you take your mom to the beach this Mother's Day, I'll let you know after the break with this week's weather forecast. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Our children and families want us to be healthy. That's why I and lots of other grown-ups got the COVID-19 vaccine, so we can stay healthy and get back to the moments we miss, like seeing our friends and family. Here you go, Daddy, for a healthy checkup, a sticker. Oh, thanks, son. <laughs> With free COVID-19 vaccines, sunnier days are ahead. Visit GetVaccineAnswers.org. Come next week, President Biden will have a new press secretary. Her name is Corrine Jean-Pierre. Pierre is a veteran of both the Biden and Obama campaigns, and she will make history as the first black press secretary, as well as the first gay press secretary. Jen Paskey, the current press secretary, will get her own show on MSNBC. Despite the White House easing COVID restrictions in recent weeks, COVID spikes are happening abroad. Kiana Favela is here with your COVID report. Thanks guys, a grim milestone. According to data from the CDC, the US reached 1 million COVID-19 deaths. Public health officials are urging people to get their booster shots as only 30% of the US population has received them. And nearly every US state is experiencing a spike in COVID cases this week. This is the first time our country has seen a notable spike in cases since the peak of the Omicron variant in January. What's going around now is the BA.2 subvariant of the Omicron strain. Although it tends to be more mild, it's highly contagious. Currently, the U.S. is reporting an average of about 60,000 cases per day, and that number is continuing to trend upwards. Vice President Harris has tested negative for COVID and returned to in-person work. While she was sick with COVID, VP Harris was prescribed Pfizer's antiviral pill Paxlovid. Her office says she will follow CDC guidelines by wearing a tight-fitting mask until her 10-day period is over. She is fully vaccinated and twice boosted. The FDA is limiting the use of the Johnson & Johnson COVID vaccine. The decision comes after researchers with the FDA and CDC found that the J&J &J vaccine led to 60 confirmed cases of thrombosis and thrombocytopenia syndrome. These syndromes can lead to rare but potentially life-threatening blood clots. The vaccine will now be limited to adults age 18 years and older who are medically ineligible for another approved vaccine. And in Beijing, things are taking an extreme turn. The city is just reopening after a May Day holiday ban. During the ban, all restaurants, theme parks, gyms, sports facilities, and entertainment venues were closed. Citizens are now required to have a negative COVID test to enter public spaces and use public transportation. China's zero COVID approach of containing outbreaks has the country considering the negative effects to the economy. 
Typically, the May Day holiday brings in a lot of tourists and revenue to China. With your COVID report, I'm Kiana Favela. Have you ever wanted to stay at a hotel in space, Jalea? Um, yes. Well, in three years, that dream could become a reality. The Californian company Orbital Assembly Corporation announced on Tuesday that they will be launching two space stations with hotel accommodations for tourists by 2025. But what about anti-gravity? Will I float while I sleep? Well, the company says their hotels will be equipped with artificial gravity so their tenants can move around as they normally do. This is despite the fact that this technology has not been invented yet. This will be a step up from the current commercial space travel we, ha we are seeing Jeff Bezos create. Man, I hope that hotel has a great heating system. It gets cold up in space. Well, down here we might want some AC. Anna Montemore is in the Weather Center with your weekly forecast. Anna? Thanks, my little ray of sunshines. Before we dive into this week's weather forecast, I wanted to share some great news for your next adventure. California announced that library card holders across the state can now access one-day passes to any national park in the U.S. As part of a three-year pilot program, libraries will receive three national park hang tags, which can be used any day of the week, including holidays. Most state parks in California are accessible with the pass, and you can check out the park's government website for more information. All right, let's move on to this week's forecast. Right now in orange, it is currently 78 degrees, and it looks like it's gonna break into the 80s later this afternoon. Now for our national weather forecast, starting with my hometown of Seattle, Washington, looking at 52 degrees, a little bit different than here in orange, and expecting rain per usual. Moving down to San Francisco, it is looking like it's 63 degrees, and over in Sin City, it is 99 degrees. No thank you. And over here in Denver, we see it is a high of 81 degrees, and down in Austin, Texas, it is humid today with 95 degrees. Moving up to Minneapolis, it is 72 degrees, and over in Chi-Town, it is a crisp 52 degrees. And now over on the East Coast, both New York and Washington DC are in the 60s and expect rain today. And in the South, we see some high temperatures and 88 degrees in Miami. Now let's take a closer look at our orange forecast. As you see inland, it is the, the hottest temperatures at 77 degrees here in orange. And as we go out onto the coast, we see it is mid 60s. And in Laguna Beach and Newport Beach, it looks like sunny skies for the most part. So I would suggest to bring a jacket to keep warm in that ocean breeze. Now let's move on to our orange seven day forecast. No surprise here, it is clear skies and sunny, and it might be breaking into the 80s later today, with the rest of the week into the mid and low 70s. It's safe to say that temperatures today are a great way to kick off the weekend, and Sunday will be the perfect time to take your mama to the beach for Mother's Day. That has been your weather forecast. I'm Anna Montemore, back to you at the desk. Feeling like LA sports are in a drought? I guess we have to watch hockey? I'll have your sports update after the break. When times get dark, we can't see the help that's all around us. Let 211 be your guiding light for help with food, health care, and other resources. 211, how can I help you? Call 211 or visit 211.org. 211, get connected, get help. Get your fanciest hats out of your closet this weekend. The 148th Run for the Roses, better known as the Kentucky Derby, starts tomorrow. If you are a gambler, this is the right year for you, as there are no favorite competitors for the 2022 race. An exciting weekend for horse race lovers, but not so much for LA sports fans. Luca Evans has more on the local sports scene. Luca? What's up, party people? It's me, Luca Evans, and I'm back again on the sports desk to give you a ball of a time. Get it? Hearing the latest in the sports world. Honestly, bit of a dry spell for sports down here. Football's in the offseason. The Lakers and the Clippers are out of the NBA playoffs. Angel City just won their first ever game, but they only play once a week. 
and the Angels and Dodgers rock, but nobody really cares about baseball until the postseason, so what's an LA fan to do? Your only solution, unfortunately, may be to try and watch hockey. The horror, yeesh. That's right, you may never have given one ounce of a crap about the Los Angeles Kings, but they're in the playoffs for the first time since 2017. Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl may be fast on the ice, but they're no Jonathan Quick. The Kings goaltender led Los Angeles to a win in the first game of a series against the Edmonton Oilers. Iman. Dreisaitl back to the point. Barry to McDavid. McDavid moving in. Seam pass. Dreisaitl diving save by Quick. Phenomenal. But the Oilers did come back Wednesday to knock the skates off the Kings with a 6-0 win, so it's looking like it could be a tough series for L.A. They play Game 3 tonight at home. But if you would really just rather eat a can of worms than watch hockey, though, you can celebrate the close of another sports season for our very own Chapman Panthers. Baseball is their final series of the season this weekend before heading into the playoffs, because if Chapman's good at one thing, it's baseball. Kudos to to coach Scott Laverty for building a heck of a program there. And Panthers softball is playing its first postseason game. It's a jungle clash against the Laverne Leopards tonight. They just beat them in two out of three games last weekend, so Laverne, more like la, more like la gonna lose at softball. The track and field season, meanwhile, is wrapping up this month as they just completed one of the biggest meets of the year. Promise Johnson has more. This past weekend, the track and field Skyac Championships were held at Whittier College. Nine teams competed against each other, and many of our own Chapman athletes not only placed and made personal bests, but also made school history. Jesse McMillan was one of these athletes. He has been dominating in pole vault this year, breaking the school record multiple times and just this past weekend, placing second in his event. It's hard to say because, like, I'm not done yet. I can still have three more meets. We'll see how fast I can get over, like, five meters, hopefully five And he's not the only one making strides. Some athletes continue to excel despite dealing with injuries. Sophomore Alec Desuicito broke the school record in triple jump even after recently recovering from a hamstring injury. And senior Maya Girardi placed third in the javelin after injuring her elbow earlier this year. My jumps run really well. Um, did not go as expected, though. I didn't expect to do as well as I did. Um, but I kept jumping farther and farther on each jump. And the last one was just the best. And it was super exciting in the moment. And I felt really hyped. Very relieved to podium. It wasn't the most ideal season. I was injured the first half of it. Still battling with that throughout the rest of the year. So I'm just glad I could show up. The relays are always a very entertaining event to watch, and this year the teams did not disappoint. The boys 4x400 meter relay placed fifth and the girls placed third. All athletes making sure to leave their hearts on the field. I was a little nervous to start us off. I've never started a 4x4 in my life, and I thought it was really neat to get out of the box fast, and I was able to cruise the whole time, and I feared by two seconds in a normal 400. The Chapman track and field team had a very full season this year, and while this is the end for many of them, some will still continue on to the last chance meets this weekend, in hopes of better marks or possibly qualifying for national championships. Reporting for Chapman News, I'm Promise Johnson. Good luck. Good luck to those at those last chance meets and stay tuned next week for a little awards show that we have planned honoring the best of Chapman sports this past year. But now let's talk about the basketball playoffs for a second and I'll do a saucy little segment for you where I I, in all my infinite wisdom pick the playoff winners because I can literally do whatever I want on this segment. In the West, let's take a look. The Mavericks, in my opinion, just don't have the defensive core to handle Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and the Phoenix Suns. So I'm feeling like the Suns are going to play the Warriors, who are going to beat the Grizzlies, because I'm from the Bay Area, and I have sheer denial of any other outcome. And let's move on to the East, where Miami's just going to beat Philadelphia, because Joel Embiid is hurt, and James Harden is, unfortunately, old and slow. And then in the series of the playoffs, this could go either way, but I like Giannis Antetokounmpo solving the hellacious Boston defense in seven games. So let's check back next week to see if, well, I got any of this right. And finally, we've gone from free Britney in America to free Britney in Russia. We have an update from across the world as Britney Griner may be headed home soon. 
The United States has said that Russia, quote, wrongfully detained the WNBA star. And the U.S. State Department said it will continue to undertake efforts to provide appropriate support to Ms. Greiner. Well, that's all she wrote. I mean, literally, that's all that my producer Alexis Tripke wrote for our segment rundown. So stay tuned next week. We've got some fun stuff planned. From baddies to daddies, I'll tell you all about the Met Gala and the newest dad in Hollywood, coming up on Chapman News. I'll be seeing you in all of our favorite places with laughter and warm embraces all day through. Elmo <laughs> loves you. I love you too. With free COVID-19 vaccines, sunnier days are ahead. Visit GetVaccineAnswers.org. I'll be seeing you. And Miss Pac-Man has been inducted into the World Video Game Hall of Fame. The 1981 hit sequel to Pac-Man is being recognized for its popularity and impact on pop culture. Hall of Fame officials stating that Miss Pac-Man was the first widely recognizable female video game character, opening the door for more women characters in arcade games. Jalea, did you see the Met Gala this year? Yes, I did, and I loved Bella Hadid's outfit. I loved Bella Hadid's outfit too, but also Rosalia killed it. With more on the Met Gala and your entertainment report is Adrian Mitchell. Adrian? What's up, people? And welcome to the only episode ever of Four Mitchell Minutes, where I talk and you listen. It'll be the best four minutes of your life. First up, the Met Gala. If you live under a rock, that's when celebrities dress up and raise money for New York's Metropolitan Museum of Art. I've never been, but then again, I don't have $35,000 to drop on a ticket, and I'm not a celebrity. Although in my mom's eyes, I'm sure I am. Now there's always a theme, and this year's theme was gilded glamour. I'm sensing the organizers were all about alliteration and were blatantly blind that America's currently suffering from some not-so-glamorous inflation. Despite that, the Met earned a record $17.4 million. Now let's discuss some standout looks from the Met Gala, starting with Kim Kardashian, because she somehow continues to stay relevant. I guess you could say Kardashian thrifted her look, if you count a $4.8 million dress thrifted. The original owner of the dress was Marilyn Monroe, and Monroe wore it to sing happy birthday to JFK. Kardashian borrowed the dress from the museum and wasn't allowed to make alterations, so she lost 16 pounds in three weeks. Now, three weeks isn't a long time, but over 20 years is. That's how long it's been since Hillary Clinton last went to the Met Gala. This year, Clinton wore a dress embroidered with the names of 60 influential women in history. Everyone from Abigail Adams and Sacagawea to Harriet Tubman to Eleanor Roosevelt to Shirley Chisholm to Madeleine Albright, who we just lost. Clinton wasn't the only politician wearing a message. New York Mayor Eric Adams wore a long black tuxedo coat with the words, end gun violence. It's a nice sentiment, but according to the NYPD, there's been a 16.2% increase in shootings. So maybe striding on red carpets isn't the best way to solve problems. And yet again, Blake Lively made the night, well, lively with her Versace color-changing gown. It was definitely a Disney Princess Aurora moment. New York City classic architecture, I have the notes. This is detailing from the Empire State Building, some of the draping from the Statue of Liberty. And finally, we need to discuss one celebrity who wasn't physically there but still made a stony impression, Rihanna herself. Yes, they literally turned her into a marble statue. From the Met Gala to another potential COVID super spreader event, let's talk about the White House Correspondents' Dinner. Yes, after two years, the political roasts are finally back, headlined by Trevor Noah. Listen to my favorite Biden roast. If you didn't come, I totally would have understood. Yeah, yeah because these people have been so hard on you, which I don't get. I really don't. You know, I think ever since you've come into office, things are really looking up. You know, gas is up, rent is up, food is up. <laughs> Not to mention COVID cases are up. The dinner resulted in a handful of attendees testing positive, including CNN, NBC, and CBS employees. 
Speaking of positive, I'm positive Marvel fans are going to be having a great weekend. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness just came out yesterday, so buy your tickets now. Now, on a more serious note, I have an update on the Johnny Depp Amber Heard defamation case. Heard took the stand, accusing Depp of sexual assaults, cocaine usage, and also forcefully searching her for cocaine. She described the abuse in detail. Listen to this. Flames me up by my neck and holds me there for a second and tells me that he, he could kill me. And that was an embarrassment. A spokesperson for Depp issued this statement after Heard gave her testimony. Ms. Heard did indeed deliver the performance of her life in her direct examination. The upcoming cross-examination from Mr. Depp's team will be most telling and will certainly highlight the many fallacies Ms. Heard has now attempted to pass off as fact. And earlier this week, comedian Dave Chappelle was attacked on stage during a performance at the Hollywood Bowl. Make some noise for hip hop history. Authorities have confirmed the attacker was an audience member that raced onto stage with the weapon and tackled Chappelle. It is unclear if the weapon was actually used, but police confirm that Chappelle remains uninjured from the incident. In fact, he actually later continued the show and joked about the incident. Hey, if Chris Rock can do it, so can Dave Chappelle. And speaking of shocking, Post Malone announced him and his girlfriend are expecting a baby. I guess we can call him Daddy Malone now. And that's not all the Daddy Posty news. He is also set to drop his new album, 12 Carat Toothache, sometime this June. But I can't wait that long, so this weekend I'll be listening to two new albums from Bad Bunny and Jack Harlow, who can definitely put me in first class. Well, that was the one and only ever for Mitchell Minutes, where I talked and you listened. Back to you at the desk. In honor of Mother's Day, the First Lady, Jill Biden, will be traveling to Eastern Europe this weekend. She will arrive in Ukraine on Sunday, where she'll, she will be visiting Ukrainian refugees. This morning, our First Lady landed in Romania. She is currently serving lunch at an airbase near the coast of the Black Sea with about 27,000 military personnel there. This is her most high-profile venture since her husband took office. And Jill Biden may be one of America's most famous mothers, but my mom is still number one. <laughs> Me too. We asked Chapman students to tell us what Mother's Day means to them. Mother's Day, I think, is a great opportunity to thank our mothers and tell them that we appreciate all that they've done for us throughout our lives and the support that they've given us. Mother's Day is a time where you just get to appreciate, you know, to everyone, the coolest woman that they always know, and that is our moms. I love my mother very much. Um, I, I, think I'm, I think I'm the most grateful for her out of, like, any other person on the planet. A mother's job is hard, and one day a year is not really enough to thank them for the support they give us 365 days. I wouldn't be who I am without her, um, and I, I, love, I love her so much. Uh, like, she's supported me in so many ways, um, and I owe, like, all of my successes to her. You know, any bit of opportunity I can have to, you know, just show her my appreciation, show her, you know, my love for her is, you know, very special to me. I wanted to wish you an early Mother's Day, and thank you for being the best mom in the world. No, I just wanted to tell you, Mom, that, you know, I love you very much, and I appreciate you, and I just wanted to wish you a happy early Mother's Day. Oh, sweetheart. <laughs> My mom is not here. Um, she's in Shanghai right now, so it's like the entire Pacific Ocean is between us, so I really miss her, and at this difficult time, I can't be able to see her, and I won't be able to see her for like two years, so this day means a lot to me, and I think also for her. Well, happy early Mother's Day to all the moms out there. I know my mom is watching, so hi, mom. I love you. Happy early Mother's, happy early mother's Day. And also, hi, Grandma. I know you're watching, too. <laughs> I love my mom, too. I love you. Mwah! And thank you for joining us this week. Be sure to check out our YouTube page at chapmannews.tv and make sure to follow us at Chapman News. I'm Jalea Gillums. And I'm Sophia Chacon. And we will see you next week with another episode of Chapman News.